the race to the moon just got a whole lot more interesting. For years, SpaceX has held the high-profile contract to land NASA astronauts on the lunar surface, a crucial step in the Artemis program. But as timelines slipped and deadlines loomed, a new question emerged. Could the ambitious Starship HLS project actually get to the moon in time? That's the question SpaceX answered on October 30th, 2025, with a major strategy pivot. In a blog post in XThread, they revealed a simplified approach, filled with efficiency gains and streamlined plans. This came just as NASA reopened the contract to rivals. So what did they change? Is this the solution? Is the space race back on? This is the Booster Bay, and today we're doing a full deep dive into SpaceX's new HLS strategy, from the refueling challenge to the competition, and what it all means for the future of lunar exploration. To understand the new plan, we first need to look at the old one. Starship HLS was a massive undertaking. A modified Starship upper stage would serve as NASA's lunar lander for the Artemis III mission, the first crewed landing since Apollo. The mission profile was complex, bold, and heavily reliant on one major hurdle, in-orbit refueling. After launching on a super-heavy booster, the HLS lander would need to be topped off in Earth orbit. The original estimates called for a staggering 10 to 16 tanker flights to fully fuel the vehicle for a trip to the moon and back. Reports from the Government Accountability Office highlighted slow progress on the necessary cryogenic fluid transfer technology, pushing the estimated Artemis third landing date well past the initial 2025 target into 2027 and beyond. The complexity was immense, and NASA was starting to lose patience. So what did SpaceX change? In their October 30th update, they didn't reveal a new design, but rather a streamlined, software-based approach. The focus was on milestone after milestone, proving their methodical progress. Here's what's key. Simplified refueling. Instead of aiming for a massive fleet of tankers, SpaceX is focusing on efficiency gains. This is largely thanks to the improved Raptor 3 engine, which burns fuel more efficiently. Fewer tanker flights mean less time and fewer launches needed, speeding up the entire process. They're now targeting a full in-space refueling demonstration for 2026. The cargo variant, the HDL. A brand new element is the Human Class Delivery Lander, or HDL. This uncrewed variant is designed to deliver supplies and rovers, like the Viper mission, to the moon before the astronauts even arrive. By separating cargo and crew, they can test the landing architecture and build crucial infrastructure on the surface without putting crew at risk. The first HDL launch is scheduled for early 2026. The new timeline. The updated schedule is a mix of ambition and realism. An uncrewed lunar landing test with the HDL variant is set for early 2026, while a long-duration flight test in 2026 will validate lunar operations. The ultimate Artemis III readiness is now slated for the late 2020s, a more realistic target in line with NASA's current estimates of 2027 or 2028. So why the sudden simplification? Just 10 days before SpaceX's update, Acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy publicly called SpaceX behind schedule. On October 31st, NASA closed the bidding for a new, faster lander option from competitors. This was a direct response to SpaceX's delays. Now, rivals like Blue Origin and Lockheed Martin are officially back in the race for future Artemis missions. Blue Origin has its Blue Moon Lander, backed by Jeff Bezos' vast resources, and Lockheed Martin has years of experience in space. Elon Musk's response was characteristically bold, posting on X that SpaceX is moving like lightning, Starship will end up doing the whole moon mission. It's a fierce public debate over who has the best, fastest path to the moon. This update isn't just about Artemis 3. It's a glimpse into the larger Mars-focused plan. The simplified HLS with its cargo delivery capabilities serves a dual purpose. Firstly, it's about sustainability. By sending cargo ahead of crew, SpaceX can establish a persistent, long-term human presence on the moon. We're talking about habitats, rovers, and supplies for years, not just days. Secondly, it's about Mars. The Block 3 Starship upgrades, featuring stretch tanks and more powerful Raptors, will increase cargo capacity dramatically. 
a 100 plus ton cargo drop on Mars, it's not a dream anymore, it's a testable goal. The lessons learned from HLS will be directly applied to future Mars landings. So let's analyze the risks and benefits. On one hand, simplifying the refueling and decoupling cargo from crew reduces major mission risks. On the other hand, SpaceX is still reliant on technologies that haven't been demonstrated at scale, and NASA's pressure is real. The political pressure is also immense. With China targeting a crewed lunar landing by 2030, the US can't afford to fall behind. SpaceX's simplified approach could be the fastest path, but the competition is heating up and the stakes are higher than ever. What do you think? Is SpaceX's simplified approach the right move? Does it put them back in the driver's seat for the moon race? Or will the delays give rivals the edge? One thing is for sure. The Starship story is as compelling as ever. Now, I want to hear from you. What aspect of this update do you find most interesting? The simplified refueling, the new cargo lander, or the fierce competition with Blue Origin? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to stay on top of every development in the world of rocketry, be sure to smash that subscribe button. We'll see you next time here at the Booster Bay.